I mean, imagine the body of Aylan Kurdi. Remember 2015, September? The entire media, I mean, it was almost globally acknowledged, actually came up to it this one photo of a little boy on the Aegean shore. And what was the reaction? Turkey, you readmission agreement. Did it help much? No, as I said, it only changed the route. My name is Deniz Serk. I'm an associate professor at Erzien University, Department of International Relations. It's been almost a decade that I've been working as a migration expert in the field. The research shows that the more strict controls that you have, the more walls that you build, you actually create more permanent migration. Because once that person could cross that border, I mean, in whatever status, the entire idea for that person is to be able to stay. So all these like policies of building walls and making it harder for people to be mobile, it is not really working. The types of migration is changing. Actually, the result is exactly the opposite of what they want. I mean, if you check the entire European Commission funded research projects on migration, many of them are actually making these claims. But then you realize that the policy impact is totally the opposite. My argument is, Unless you create more regular means for people to be mobile around the world, there is no way to stop this. It is really ironic to see how the governments, especially in Europe, cannot really acknowledge this, because they are also the ones who are funding most of this research. So that's really puzzling me. In any other country, if you inject 3.5 million people, it would be causing outrage, right? In Turkey, this did not really happen. And I think that it is really related to how the public authorities and the media actually contextualize the whole thing. Let's say somebody from European Union is coming to talk about the, the Syrian issue in Turkey, and it is immediately about the refugee crisis. But when you're looking at the public authority speeches, you see that the Turkish public authorities are very reluctant to present this as a crisis. And that's an interesting comparison because it is actually showing us how rhetoric and discourse can make a change. The image of a refugee family that we had at the end of World War II is totally different. It's usually white family with kids, happy and healthy. But now that image is quite different from what we had. That image also changing over the years. One thing doesn't change though, I should underline. Joseph Cairns has this book called Ethics of Migration. And there, there is this passage about a typical American person who would say what about the Jewish people running away from Europe. In that single paragraph, if you change the word Jewish into Syrian and Atlantic Ocean into Aegean, I mean, you could see that that typical American in 2015 turns into a typical European. It is the same rhetoric. Do you have any Syrian friends? I mean, we have to get to know each other. How many Syrian friends do we have? Nobody knows each other. I mean, it's not like we are living together. We are living parallel lives. As a regular person who has some interest in this issue, should make a refugee friend or a migrant friend, whatever or however you want to call it. But I think that's where it starts.